Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 1969-72 World Series Preview Show. We're going to start with how each team came here. I'm going to take it back four years even, and then the matchups. And let's first start with the American League representative, the Detroit Tigers, and what they did to get here into the World Series going back four years. Uh, we're going to go all the way back to the 2018 season first. And in the 2018 uh, postseason, the Tigers were a 7 over 500 in the regular season, but they were a number five seed because Cleveland won the division. Um, so as a wild card, Detroit, they beat Seattle three games to one. Then in the next round, they went up against the Orioles and they lost to the Orioles four games to three. Ultimately, a wild card Oakland team won the World Series that year. But this is the first year where we see some 69 cards on the Tigers. And it's Mickey Lolich and Denny McLean. It's Denny McLean who was 9 and 4 with a 378 ERA on that team, while Mickey Lolich was 5 and 5, 487. So a slow start for Lolich in year one of the 69 cards. Next, let's take a look at what happened in 2019. The 2019 magical year for the Tigers. In that, they were a number three seed. And in the wild card round, they beat Baltimore uh, three games to one, getting revenge off the previous year. In the divisional round, they went up against a surprise number two Kansas City team, beat them four games to two. Then they faced the California Angels, who were the number one seed, though both teams were 11 over 500. They beat them four to three, and then they won the World Series, did the Tigers, beating the Dodgers four games to three. So that was two years ago. When we look at the team stats, Danny McLean again is 10 and 5. Lolich is 8 and 5. Um, the other uh, couple of 69 players on this team would be Bill Freehand hitting 250, Jim Northrop hitting 267, Norm Cash 299. Al Kaline, though, led the club in hitting. For that World Series team, hitting 344, 729 RBI. 37 wins. That means the team played a lot of baseball. They ended up playing in the wild card round and went all the way to the championship. Then let's go to the last year. Last year's postseason. Well, Tigers again win the division. Number three seed, 7 or 500. Uh, they lose, though, right away in the first round of the Kansas City Royals. So that's an early exit, and it would be Kansas City who loses to Baltimore, and Baltimore ends up winning the World Series. So in that post uh, in that season, Mickey Lolch is six and five with a 3.34 ERA, and Denny McLean is also six and five with a 3.01 ERA. John Hiller is added to the team. Steve Keeley is added to the team. John Rosebro. And uh, that was what happened last year, a little down year, even though they made the playoffs. And then finally, this incredible 2021 season. Uh, in 2021, at this point, we saw that they, here's that record of two games under 500, but winning the division, ending up with the number four seed. They played Baltimore, the defending world champions, beat them three games to one. Then they went up against the number two California Angels, beat them four games to two. And then they went up against the number one Boston Red Sox to beat them four games to two. And now they're in the World Series. Now let's take a look at the New York Mets. Okay, and now the road for the Mets. How did they get here? So we're going to take a peek, up, uh, peek at that. We're going to go back to uh, the 2018 uh, season. And... In that 2018 four year ago season, the New York Mets were the number one seed in the National League. Won the division 13 games over 500. And they would play a wild card Dodger team in the 
divisional round after getting a bye, and they lose four games to two. When you look at their stats, a team that finished 25 and 14, only 39 games because their season ended way too soon. The first two guys from 69 to put put on this squad is Tom Seaver, who was five and five with a 5.11 ERA. Again, this is mostly um, 80s players, and Dwight Gooden was six and two on this team. And uh, so that's your Met team from uh, three seasons ago. Then two seasons ago, you mentioned that was the year that the um, Tigers went on in the World Series. Well, guess what? New York Mets are the number one seed again. 14 games over 500. In the uh, divisional round, getting a bye. This time, it's not the Dodgers. They face the Giants. They beat them four games to three. So, they get to go to the National League Championship Series, only to lose it four games to three to the Dodgers in heartbreaking fashion. So, you see this is a team with promise, but again, we have a lot of these 80, 80 players uh, working in with uh, the, the 69-72 era. And so, um, you had uh, Dwight Good with another mar marvelous year. But Tom Seaver's 11 and 5 with a 313 ERA, so he had a great year. As a Jerry Kuzman, 8 and 5, 399. They would be joined with Cleon Jones at this time, who hit 330 with four homer 30 RBI. And uh, that was the Met team of two years ago, 31 and 17. So either one of those two teams you just saw. Um, had some tread on the tires still left, and they just got bounced. Which takes us to last year, which was a disappointing season. Um, last year, the Mets were not to be found in the National League. The wild cards were the Cubs and Dodgers. The Colorado and the Braves won the division. The Braves were only four games over 500 and won that division because the Mets finished at 500. And when you look at the 2020 season last year, there's faults all over the place. Seaver 7-5-344, Kuzman 6-5, but a sparkling buck 87 ERA. You see the batting average 232, and that doomed them last year. Uh, wasted the last uh, Sid Fernandez, Doc Gooden, Daryl Strawberry participation. Gone. They added Don Clendenin to that roster, Ed Cranepool to that roster, Tommy Ag to that roster. They didn't really help out too much. So now it was like, well, what are the Mets going to do? Did they blow it? Because they've gotten progressively worse. They were number one seed, number one seed, bounced all together, which takes us to this season, 2021. And the Mets roared into the number two seed, and they did that by uh, a 2-0 uh, wiping out of the uh, Vegas, 3-0 wiping out the Vegas team, 3-0. Got a bye, divisional round, the Mets took care of the Dodgers, four games to one to make up for a couple seasons ago. And then they went against the Dodgers rival, the Giants, and beat them four games to two. And that's where we sit today here in the World Series. Now we're gonna take a look at the lineups for the World Series game. Okay, and now the lineups for Game 1. We'll start with the Detroit Tigers in Game 1. Uh, leading off will be the second baseman, Dick McAuliffe. Now, McAuliffe actually struggled a bit in the uh, regular season. Uh, he hit 1, 92. 10 homers, though, at a leadoff spot. 21 RBI, 224 at-bats, 287 on-base percentage. Had his struggles, but he's still the uh, the spark plug of the Tiger offense leading off. Batting second, Jim Northrup. Jim made an all-star appearance for the Tigers. 316, 6 homer, 22 RBI during this campaign. 358 on base. Fine year. Jim Northrup will be playing left field today. Batting third, the right fielder. Al Kaline. Kaline hit 247 the year, 5 homer, 29 RBIs. A little down year for him. Batting fourth, 
A platoon catcher, Bill Freehan, crushes lefties. It's 272, 359 on base, three homers, and nine RBIs. Platoons with Roseboro. Some would, some might say, why well, use Roseboro and just let give Freehan the full time gig? Each guy has 103 and 104 at bats in a platoon. Batting fifth, the center fielder, Mickey Stanley, also in a platoon with Gates Brown, and both are doing fantastic in the platoon. Mickey Stanley's hitting 330 and 112 at bats, 3 homer, 16 RBI. Batting sixth, the anchor at the number six spot, Willie Horton, having a monstrous year, 271, 19 homers, 51 RBIs. He's chasing Johnny Bench's 57 RBI. He's got a lot more games, though. Um, magnificent year, and you would think, why not bat him clean up? But why ruin a good thing? He's been in the sixth hole all year against lefties and righties and tearing it up, so we don't want to move him. All right, batting seventh against lefties is Norm Cash. He bats clean up against righties. He's hitting 262, eight homer, 36 RBI. A fine year for Norm Cash. Batting eighth today, the third baseman, Elliot Maddox. His 1970 Stratomatic card, it's 248. In this card we're using, he's hitting 242 <laughs> with five homers and 21 RBI. He's actually hitting more homers than a Strat card does. And batting ninth, the shortstop, Dick Trzuski. He only had 79 at bats, hit 139. He already has 107 at bats this season, and he's hitting 159. So it's a bonus for the Tigers. On the bench, three left-handed bats. You have Gates Brown leading the club in hitting 331, nine homers and 29 RBIs on half a season. That's in a platoon. We have Kevin Collins, left-handed hitting third baseman. Does have power, though he hasn't had a homer this year, and he's hitting 137. He's uh, filling the Trzuski role, though, and Trzuski's filling the Collins role, maybe. And John Roseboro, the lefty catcher, hitting 212 this year with three home runs. Same number of homers Bill Freehan has without power. That's the Tiger offense. Doing the pitching today, Joe Coleman. He has been the all star and the biggest winner. He was the number three starter going into the season. He's now at the top of the rotation. He will pitch games one, four, and seven. He's 11 and four with a 282 ERA. And his card is the 71 card, where he was 20 and 9 with a 315 ERA, so he's exceeding that. The number two spot in the rotation is Mickey Lolich. 8 and 6, 309 ERA. He hasn't had a lot of support this year, but he has two closeout wins against the Angels and the Red Sox in the postseason. Denny McLean. Originally the number two starter, is now the number three starter. Has struggled this year. He's five and seven with a 5.16 ERA. This is with the 24-win 1969 card. And folks, if you're looking for a dark horse, and you know, complaining that the Tigers have such a poor record, I might want to mention that Joe Coleman won 20, Mickey Lolich 22, and Danny McLean won 24 games. So don't overlook this Tiger team. The number four starter is Les Kane. He was 5 and 3 with a 388 ERA this year. In 1970, though, he won 12 games with the Tigers. In the bullpen, Howie Reed, it's been a struggle for him. 648 ERA for Howie Reed in 16 and 2 thirds innings. He was an expo, actually. Steve Keeley, 2 and 2. Uh, he's 0 and 1 with a 284 ERA this year. He was with the White Sox. Um, if it gets hairy, they pretty much will just go to Timmerman and Hiller. Here's Tom Timmerman, 16 in the third innings this year, buck 65 ERA. Had a great year in 72 of the Tigers with a 288 ERA on that Tiger team that won the American League East when Baltimore faltered. And finally, the closer, John Hiller, buck 90 ERA in 23 innings with six A's. This is a 70 card, six and six with a 303 ERA. And now, Let's take a look at the New York Mets and their starting lineup. Leading off for the New York Mets will be Joe Foy. Now, Foy had played with the Mets and the Royals in these years, and we're using his 69 Kansas City card. 
With it, he's got 175 at bats this year. He's in 246 with a 320 on base with 15 stolen bases, 5 homer, 31 RBI. Has plenty of versatility, though we have not needed to have him use all that versatility. Batting second in a platoon, Wayne Garrett. Miserable year, hitting a buck 65 with a 296 on base. But as long as those walks are on the card, we're going to leave him the two spot. Interesting parallel between Wayne Garrett and Dick McAuliffe. Left-handed hitting second baseman with power and on base having bad years hitting below the Mendoza line. Something to watch in the World Series. Batting third, you got Cleon Jones hitting 346. Big home runs in the National League Championship Series against the Giants. Hitting 346 with a 340 card, three eight homers, 33 RBI, three stolen bases. Batting fourth, a surprise player in the National League to this point, Ken Singleton. So his Stratomatic card has 198 at-bats and he hits 263. Thus far, he's got 157 at-bats and he's hitting 344 with three homers and 21 RBIs. Clearly the biggest overachiever in baseball this year. Batting fifth, the center fielder, Tommy A.G., hitting 253 with 10 over, 26 RBI. He sometimes leads off against lefties. All right, batting six, the first baseman, a platoon player, Ed Cranepool, having a miserable year, hitting 155, but he's had some big hits in the postseason for the Mets. And frankly, being demoted to the sixth spot from the four spot has really helped him and the Mets because it elevated Singleton. All right, batting seventh, You've got Don Clendenon, hit 296, 10 homer, 33 RBI. Now this is, uh, we're using a 70 card, which was better than the 69 card, a lot better. 70 straight amount of card, he has 22 homers and a 288 batting average, even though we know he's a hero in the 69 series. Having Clendenon and Crane pull in the same lineup without a designated hit, with a designated hitter and not having the pitcher bat has really benefited the Mets. All right, batting eighth, their shortstop, Bud Harrelson. Don't even need to address his batting average. Doesn't really matter. He's hitting 166 this year in 163 at-bats for us, but he's a 1-17 in short, and that's all we care about. He has seven stolen bases. And batting ninth, doing the catching, Jerry Grody. Uh, we're using a 69-252 batting average card from the Miracle Mets. With that card, this year he's hitting 248, right around the same target number, with a homer. And minus three arm, that has shut down the Dodgers and Giants' speed. But, the thing is, the Tigers have zip speed. They got nothing stealing the bases. So, you don't really need Jerry Grody's arm uh, in the World Series. You could put in Pat Corrales if you want, the backup catcher if you want his bat there. All right, on the bench, we have Bob Heiss. He had a big walk-off hit in a championship series game or in a divisional round game against the Dodgers. Hitting 228 with a strat card that hits 234, platooning with Wayne Garrett. All right, Pat Corrales, a 264 card with a 69 Cincinnati Reds. Mets brought him aboard to back up Grody. And he's been batting second against left-handed pitching because of a high on-base percentage. But he's only hitting 230 with a 323 on base this year. And then the final member of the offense, Frank Johnson, was starting and playing defense in most of these games. But by the second half of the season, when the Mets took charge, Singleton, Clendenon became everyday players against righties, which put Frank Johnson on the bench. 265, two homer, 11 RBI. His strike card is 273, so it's right in a similar spot. All right, pitching today, Jerry Kuzman. And Jerry will be pitching in games one, four, and seven. Kuzman is eight and five this year with a 312 ERA and a 1.20 whip. We are using his 69 card, where he was 17 and 9 with a 2.28 ERA. If it was a question of number of wins between the starting three pitchers, the Tigers would have the edge, believe it or not, though it would be very narrow. All right, the number two starter, 
Tom Seaver, no surprise here. Seven and five with a 419 ERA. That's kind of a lousy year. Um, 32 walks, 99 strikeouts, three to one strikeout ratio. That's about right. Uh, he won 25 games in 1969. This may not be even the best card in the uh, timeline here. He has a year better than this in the future. Um, but he gets the big 25 wins when your team wins 100 games. So Seaver 125, McLean 124. Your number three starter, John Matlack. Matlack has been magnificent. He was the first round pick, 72 card. He becomes the rookie of the year this year. Nine and two in 81 innings, buck 87 ERA. He was a 15 game winner in 72. I think all of the Met pitcher ERAs, which are 232, 21, and 28, are lower than the, the Tiger ERAs. Coleman's 315, Lolich 250, and Denny McLean 280. So, and we have the DH in both leagues, so that's the big equalizer. So the Mets pitchers are statistically better as far as ERA, not quite as good as far as volume of wins. But what a match of a big threes we have. The number four starter is Don Cardwell. Um, he only pitched 26 innings, while Seaver had 118, Kuzman 106, Matlack 81. Then it drops all the way down to 26 innings pitched for the number four starter, as he was seldom used, only when series were extended. He was 2-1 and one with a 4.50 ERA, but really the one loss uh, ballooned his ERA from around 2.5 to 4.5. All right, now into the bullpen. We have Bill Zepp, the long man, 14 innings, 2.51 ERA. Not much to say here. He just is on the team just to eat up some innings in a blowout or route. But the big three in the bullpen, Danny Frisella, 2-0 with a 2.91 ERA. He's the righty who gets the lefties out. Very important role. As Once we get to see Tug McGraw, you'll see why. All right, Cy Acosta is your blistering righty power pitcher who gets righties out. He had two saves and 15 innings with a buck 15 ERA. And lastly, Tug McGraw, nine saves, 233 ERA, um, 19 and a third innings for Tug. And uh, he's very uh, good against righties, obviously. Struggles against lefties. It was an advantage against the Giants because the only lefty the Giants had on the team was Willie McCovey and a bunch of switch hitters. But the Tigers are going to be a puzzle, a slight bit of a puzzle for Tug in that you've got Dick McAuliffe, Jim Northrup, and Norm Cash, three lefties that Tug McGraw is going to have to dodge in that Tiger order. So, the series could be a lot closer than what the pundits suggest. The 29 and 16 Mets against the 29 and 25 Tigers in the World Series. That's it for your World Series preview. We will begin this uh, tomorrow and we'll have individual games posted throughout. Thanks for checking it out. We'll see you next time.